Look at this, dearie. This kind of hand mirror has become the latest fashion. Oh, it's a trifling thing. But people like me have to stay in the loop to make a living. Come here, gaze into the mirror and fix your hat. What do you see? Do you like what you see? A clever answer. I can tell you will fit right in here. But there is still much left to see beyond the mirror. Ah, oh, the young folks step to an ever-changing waltz. If you want to follow their trends, you'll need perfect timing to join the swirling dance. Some have fallen behind. They lounge by the fountains of the park, bemoaning their lives and the price of rent. Come the next banquet and exhibition, they arrive wearing a new fine coat, but underneath their linens are ragged and old. The mirror's reflection held a silver sheen once. Now it's tarnished at the edges. So in the warmth of spring, the ice cracks deeper. One splinters into two, and each begins to splinter again. They set up the mirror and lift the cloth, exposing to light the good, the bad, and what lies beyond them both. Then the factions split and then split again. Secessionists, by their nature, are not in the business of keeping things together. They won't stop the fractures. They can't. In lifting the cloth, in seeing their reflection, they scatter themselves like dandelion seeds in the wind. Oh, I don't know where, but I do know what they're doing. Some of them still paint with gold leaf. Others believe they must depict what is real. Some depict the ravings of their dreams. Some seek to change the streets into works of art. And others drive out all meaning from their work. The only time they ever reach an agreement is just before they lift the cloth from the mirror. Before the Potemkin village with all its empty facades moves somewhere else, some of them might just achieve their ends. To be like the golden cabbage, sitting atop its dome over the ring road. To be recognized by everyone.